New reports show that Halo Infinite's development was a rocky one on the verge of complete collapse, and how the original plan was to release the multiplayer in 2019 and the campaign in 2020, but things changed. So if you want to know more, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again, give you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like these kind of videos, make sure to tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this and it greatly helps out the video and channel within that YouTube algorithm. So today we're gonna to be talking about a lot about some of the rocky side of things of Halo Infinite's development. So if you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo guys, make sure you tap that subscribe button, keeps you up to date. So let's get right into the content here. So gaming journalist and known insider, Jason Schreier goes on to Twitter to kind of talk about a little bit of this article they put together Together, talking about how Halo Infinite's development was a rocky one, with this tweet even comparing it to Anthem. Which, if you guys don't remember, that was a game from Bioware that was basically supposed to be like Iron Man meets Destiny, and it was filled with bugs and was a complete disaster. Stating two and a half years ago, a number of 343 staff passed around our big Anthem article, lamenting that much of it could also apply to Halo Infinite. Well, that's really concerning to hear. Someone pointed out at the end of that kind of development hell, you can wind up like Anthem or you can wind up like God of War. Which I think that last part puts a lot of context about how the development went when it comes to Halo Infinite. Uh, we, we can already tell from just like the lack of features and stuff like that that's in not in the game right now. Uh, that there's some parts that like they just could not get working properly before launch. Which kind of leads to like that Anthem side of things. But it also leads towards that God of War side of things. Because what's in the game, like the campaign itself and the multiplayer itself is absolutely fantastic. And I'm glad that 343 prioritized making sure the game itself ran properly and also it's fun to play. So I definitely feel like we landed more on the God of War side of things because things could have been a whole hell of a lot worse. But that's kind of the nature of game development that you're trying to push the game to its most potential possible, trying out some new features, trying out some new things that can either completely work or completely flop. And I'm lucky to see that most of the stuff completely works with Halo Infinite. It's just the lack of stuff around the core gameplay experience is what really needs some help, which I'm glad we're complaining about like customization and features rather than like what makes a good Halo game like we have had since like Halo Reach. So I, I'm glad we're in this state of an argument rather than arguing about the game itself. Next, Jason Schreier actually provides a little bit more information about the development of Halo Infinite and how the dates looks like to be changed quite a lot and had multiple delays. Jason Schreier says here on Twitter, a couple of tidbits that were trimmed from the article that they wrote up about the Halo Infinite's development saying that 343's toolset Faber was so difficult to use that they even spent months considering the switch to Unreal, which 343 did not do. Though an interesting thing here saying the game was delayed multiple times. One early plan was to release the multiplayer in 2019 and the campaign in 2020, which if you told me early 2019 that would have been the case, I would have called you crazy because I would have figured that they would have released the campaign and multiplayer together. But what we actually got was the multiplayer on November 15th and the campaign on December 8th, almost a whole month later. I'm like, yeah, actually, yeah, that totally what could have happened right there. Now, there have been multiple sources that have said that the tool set that 343 works with to create Halo isn't the easiest one to work with. Uh, a lot of Glassdoor reviews say that the company is great, the game that content that they're working on is fantastic, the tool set, not so much, which I think we've kind of seen this theme come around with multiple articles, multiple news sources, reviews on Glassdoor and things like that, really kind of give an idea of that the stuff that they use to create Halo can be rather difficult to work with, but the stuff that they are doing and the company that they are working for is fantastic. Now, a lot of things changed throughout the year of 2020, a global pandemic uh, and also a huge delay for the game as well, kind of changed things up quite a bit. But it's quite interesting that was the original plan. I'm glad it wasn't because that delay really helped out the game a lot. Continuing on with the development of Halo Infinite, Jason Swire also talks about how the development was a bit rough because of the change of hands that happened so much within the development of Halo Infinite. If you guys don't know, Microsoft actually relies a lot on contract work to get a lot of their work done. They don't actually hire a whole lot of people to actually like do the work. That's more for management side of things that they hire for. And Schreier kind of echoes that saying, as usual, one of Infinite's biggest development problems was labor. A large chunk of 343's workers were on contracts that couldn't stay longer than 18 months due to Microsoft restrictions. Full-time promotions were rare, so the studio was constantly losing talent and knowledge. 
This isn't just a 343 issue, it's a Microsoft issue as well. So in the entirety of Microsoft has a long history of using and being sued for abusing contractors. And I can confirm this as someone who has worked as a Microsoft contractor for many, many years that you would have thought that like, hey, I've been a contractor at Microsoft for years now, maybe you need me on the team. And we saw this happen multiple times on Twitter as well. There was a lot of really great contractors that were there at 343, super passionate about Halo, making some amazing work. Like they've made like actual sections within the campaign actually there that, you know, contractors worked on. And sadly enough, they had to go after 18 months. Also to put better context behind this, it's also very common for game studios to kind of bloat up a bit during the, the final year of development, especially when it comes to a game. And then usually kind of, you know, people get let off or the contracts end once the product's finally out. That with Halo Infinite, things are going to be different because it's a live service game. The game's always going to be in development. So we could see 343 make the case to have less contract work in there, but obviously with Microsoft's standards that it can be kind of tricky. I think the biggest thing to take away from this is that it's not necessarily development hell or 343 pushing their employees harder than they needed to. They stated right here multiple times that you know, a lot of employees were happy to work at 343. Most of the people that left left because they had other opportunities or their contracts ran out, not because of a lack or disagreement of creative vision with the game. I think the reason why why we lost Chris Lee during the development is because he just didn't make the deadline of 2020. I feel like even Halo Infinite, like if it was going to release in 2020 with or if there was no pandemic, I still feel like there would have been some serious issue that a delay would have been needed anyways. I think that initial tweet from Jason Schreier kind of puts a better context that like, that you're kind of always like on this fence, right? Balancing on like go falling into the Anthem side of things, which would be terrible, but also falling into the God of War side of things, which would be fantastic. And we're fortunate that Halo Infinite kind of fell more on the God of War side of things. This tweet from Joseph Staten really does provide a lot more context and just kind of a little bit of insight of how it was to develop Halo Infinite. Recognizing that the game is launching at an incredibly tough time with the COVID-19 pandemic still going around and disrupting family lives and friendships. And how this pandemic radically changed their interactions with coworkers and collaborations. Even saying that it's been hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. But the tweet really was more just kind of like a big thank you of just saying like, hey guys, it's been a crazy road to get to this point and we're lucky that we were able to work on such an amazing franchise and create such an amazing game. So that's a little bit of extra insight into the development of Halo Infinite, guys. I think we're very fortunate what we got even though it's not the best release of, halo, of a halo game we've ever had uh, it's certainly one of the best halo games that we've ever had so if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently check out this playlist right here i got a link to all my halo infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you all in the next one peace out